Everybody says, Express LRS, oh, it's perfect. You just put your binding phrase in, flash it up, and everything works. Except for when it doesn't. What does this blinky light mean? And how come nothing happens when I use my friggin' sticks? Screw it. It's going in the garbage. Because that's how it is sometimes. Even though Express LRS can be wonderful, that is how it is sometimes. But don't worry, it's okay. Today I'm gonna show you some of the most common problems people run into during their Express LRS setup, especially when it comes to getting the sticks to actually work in Betaflight. There are several reasons why this happens, and today we're gonna go over all of them. Now, before we get started, just a couple of things to note. One, if you've never flashed your Express LRS gear before, you're definitely gonna wanna do that. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video linked in the description below that will go over the most successful way to do that. It's kinda long, but it's very detailed. Just stick through it. You'll learn a lot if you haven't ever done it before, and you need to get that process down first. Two, there are two different kinds of Express LRS receivers. One is called SPI. It is built into the flight controller. You may already have seen that before. The other is the UART based kind, which means it's external and soldered on. We're going to be looking at both of them today and there's gonna be some slight variations and differences between that. But the really important thing you need to remember here is that your radio and your receiver both need the same major revision of Express LRS on. So if your receiver has a 3.x version and your radio has a 2.x version, that is not going to work. You need to make sure that your receiver and your radio both use the same major revision, which is gonna really be version 2.5.1 or one of the version 3.1 versions of Express LRS. Just make sure they match. It's gonna be really important for what we're gonna do. But the first thing we're gonna look at to start troubleshooting our issue where we're not getting any response out of the radio into the quad is look at the light on the receiver. And that's gonna depend on what kind of receiver you have. Like I said, there are the two kinds, UART and SPI based. If you have a UART based receiver, it's fairly easy to find the light. You just power up the quad and take a look at the receiver. In this case, my receiver's right on top here. You can see the blinkity light there. That is the light I'm referring to. There's only one light on Express LRS receivers, so that will be the one that we're looking at if we're talking about UART based. The other kind, SPI, is built into your flight controller, so the light for it may be hidden somewhere on the board. And you just have to cross your sausagey little fingers that there is one, because the vendor is not required to put one on there. Most of the time they do, but it doesn't always tell you which one is which, and there's a lot of blinkity lights. So if you're not sure which one there is on the board for you, go ahead and go to the manufacturer website, try to find a diagram, see if you can figure that out, because we're gonna wanna look at the lights. The lights blink in a certain pattern to tell us what is wrong with the system, and that's exactly where we're gonna start with this, with the blink patterns. Now you'll also notice there are multiple colors. Mine was blue that I just showed you a second ago, but you may have amber, green, unicorn, I don't know. There's no standard color, just know that it's one LED and whatever color it is, the flash patterns are what matters, not the colors themselves. So go locate your LED and then let's take a look at what they're doing because there are a lot of different things the flash pattern can do. And I'm going to list them all right here, assuming I've moved over far enough. There's a list right here of the different blink patterns. Yeah, so figure out which one yours is doing after you've booted it up. Make sure that when you boot it up, you already have your radio on so that if it were going to connect, it would. You selected your Express LRS model on the radio that you set up, hopefully when you did all the flashing. And everything is configured in a way where if it was working, it should be working now. You wanna see what the light's doing when it's in that state. And pick one of these right here that I have, and then go to the spot in the video where I have timelines for each of those different kinds of things. And let's talk about exactly what to do about them. And the first group of blink codes we're gonna take a look at are the single slow flash and the super fast rapid blink. They actually mean two different things. The first one means that the Express LRS receiver is actually just setting in idle mode. So it's waiting on something to happen. The second one means that it's gone into Wi-Fi update mode, which usually means that it's set around long enough for the timer to expire and it thinks you're gonna wanna flash it. So it turns its internal Wi-Fi on and does its thing waiting for you. So it's just sitting there. Normally that happens after 60 to 90 seconds. It depends on what you set when you built the firmware, assuming you flashed it. So that's totally normal. But if you're expecting it to have a bind right now and to make stick movement happen in beta flight, and it's not, something's definitely going wrong. 
And you're probably gonna have to start with running through the binding process. If you've already been through the binding process and you're still getting this, we'll get to what that could mean. But if you haven't bound it yet, now is the time to bind it. If you don't know how to bind it, no big deal. I have a link to the Express LRS webpage that will show you how to do that. It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, so go there if you need to bind it. If you've already done the binding process though, there are really two causes for this. And the first one is that possibly the RF module in your radio is not activated. The model you have selected isn't turning on the internal or the external ELRS module, or it's got the wrong ones on if you have a four in one internally and need to activate the external and it hasn't been selected. So possibly the model configuration on your radio is just not activating the module for Express LRS. The second one is the version of Express LRS on your module and radio aren't the same, which we talked about earlier. If you have two varied versions of very varied versions of Express LRS, it just won't work. A 2.x version cannot bind with a 3.x and vice versa. So you need to make sure that they are on the same version. The third reason why it could be is the receiver was flashed with a binding phrase. So whenever you build the firmware, you get to insert a binding phrase. It's not that big a deal for the transmitter if you flash it with a binding phrase because it can pair to multiple things. But the receiver, if it's flashed with a binding phrase, will not be able to bind normally unless you remove the binding phrase. So what do we do about these things? Well, let's get the easy one out of the way first and make sure the correct module is selected on our radio. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure the model that you're actually wanting to use for Express LRS is the one you currently have selected on your radio. Obviously your radio is powered up. And if that is the case, if you have the right one selected, you're gonna wanna hit the MDL key. And when you hit that MDL key, you're gonna come up to the settings for the model. You're gonna wanna scroll down and it doesn't matter if it's color or not, you're gonna scroll down here to where we see internal RF and external RF. You can see my internal RF is off and my external RF is set to CRSF, channel range one through 16, all of those things here. And mine is set up that way because I'm running an external Express LRS module. I have a four in one module inside of my radio, so I need the external one. Just make sure that the on one, the one that's set to CRSF, is the one that's either internal or external based on your radio. Some radios have them internally, some have them externally. Make sure you have the right one and the other one that you're not supposed to be using is set to off. That is super important. Another thing to note is if you're running an SPI based quad, like we talked about earlier, the built-in one, make sure that you're not running a packet rate. So go into the Lua script for your Express LRS and make sure you're not running a packet rate that starts with a D or an F. If you're running those rates, they actually are not supported by SPI based receivers. So it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna bind. It's not gonna do its thing, no matter how many times you try. So make sure that is not the case. And now for the bad news that you've been waiting for. Yeah, if, if it's one of those other two things, if that all lined up and should be working, then you're gonna wanna reflash your receiver. You're at least gonna wanna reflash the receiver. I would also reflash the transmitter, that's just me, but either you've got a binding phrase that doesn't match for some reason, maybe it got typoed when you built the firmware, or your radio doesn't have a binding phrase in it at all, but the receiver does, those two things are never gonna speak to each other. Now, technically, you could go into the web pages for both of them, assuming you don't have an SPI-based quad, because getting a binding phrase out of an SPI-based quad it requires CLI or at least praying that Betaflight 4.4 works the way it should. You could take it out of the place that it goes. Anyway, the easiest way is to reflash them if you're using UART based equipment. So I recommend you do that. Just build new flashes, make sure the binding phrases line up, make sure you're using the same version for both and flash them again, try the binding process and hope it works. And, and that's basically it for when you're getting either the slow bink, blink, bink, bink, the slow bink or the super fast rapid flashing one. That's basically what, what it means is that you just haven't yet had a successful bind. Thank goodness for the light codes, otherwise we'd never know. And now for the one that I see happen the most lately, the most, the notorious triple blink. If you've got your radio powered on and your quad powered on, you're getting a triple blink, it's model match, which if you don't know what model match is, it basically locks the model on your radio to a specific quad. 
That's all, that's all it's there for. It's really a niche use case where you maybe have some specialized settings for one particular quad and you don't want those settings to apply to anything else. So you make a one-off model in your radio for it. You set a model match number in there and then you also set that number on the receiver for the quad. And when you do that, if you accidentally have that model selected, it won't bind to any of your other quads regardless of the binding phrase or any of that. It will do the whole triple blink thing, which we're seeing now. And there's a good chance that you didn't set that up. And you're not wrong. You really probably didn't set that up. However, it's still activated. This has been happening a ton lately with ExpressLRS 3.1. It's just a thing. So I'm gonna show you how to take care of it. L let's, let's get it off of there. First, we're gonna start by going into the ExpressLRS Lua script on our radio. So we'll hit the sys key and then we'll go into the ExpressLRS Lua and you can see here a model match option. You can see it's set to off. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on and then back all the way out of the Lewis script, open up the Lewis script again, go down to model match again, hit it, turn it off, and then back out of the Lua one more time and all the way back to the screen. And then you're gonna wanna unplug your quad, power down your radio, then power your radio back up, wait a few seconds, plug the quad back in, and keep your fingers crossed that you get no more triple light because what should have happened in theory is that the radio should have told the quad, hey, turn your model match off. But there's also a partial chance that it didn't actually work because it was already in the triple light blinking scenario. So now we got to do the more difficult part and that is turn model match off on the receiver, which means that we're going to want to start it up into Wi-Fi mode. So go ahead and unplug your quad plug your quad back in, keep it nice and cool because you're gonna leave it turned on for a while and you're gonna wait for that receiver to go into the rapid blink scenario, which means Wi-Fi enabled. And now that we have the rapid blink, we're gonna go to Wi-Fi here on a computer and we're gonna find ExpressLRS RX and we're gonna connect to that thing. If it asks you for a password, it's, it's ExpressLRS, all lowercase, super duper easy. And once it's connected, we're gonna go to a web browser and type in HTTP colon slash slash 10.0.0.1, which will take us to the web page on the receiver. And once we're here, we're gonna go down to model and then we're gonna scroll down and make sure this checkbox for enable model match is not selected. If it is, uncheck it and hit save. And that's it, model match should now be disabled. So power down your quad, power down your radio, boot up your radio, then boot up your quad and hopefully the triple light turns into a solid light. And if it is, that means you're bound and you are golden. There may still be some problems getting your sticks in though. There's gonna be a whole section toward the very end of the video about that, so we'll get there in a minute. But as far as the triple blink thing, at least that's not happening anymore. And I hope your sticks are working because that will be so much easier if that's the case. All right, that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. This one is gonna be two again. I'm gonna bundle them up. It's gonna be the double blink and the medium single blink. And like I said, medium single blink, meaning that it's a little bit faster than the first single blink we talked about. Here's the two of them side by side again so you can see the difference. But let's start with the double blink. The double blink is actually really simple and not a bad thing at all. It means that your receiver's in pairing mode. Not too shabby. You're actually in a mode that makes sense. And if you're wondering how that happened, plugging and unplugging the quad three times in a row puts it into pairing mode. So it's possible that you unplugged and plugged and it just thought it was gonna go into pairing mode, so that's why you have the double blink. Super easy fix, just unplug the pack, wait about 10 seconds, plug it back in, and you should no longer see the double blink. It'll be some other blink code and then find that and go look up that one if things aren't working right. But it's in pairing mode if it's in the double blink. If you're in the middle of pairing, that totally makes sense, but if you're not, unplug it, wait a second, plug it back in and go. Now the medium single blink, this is where it gets pretty crappy. If you have the medium single blink, and I'm not talking about the, the single blink that we started with, that's totally normal. The medium single blink though, it's a little bit more rapid and it means your receiver's dead. Your, your receiver's dead. It can't see the chip on board. It's, it's deaded. It can't see the radio chip. The processor is working, but it cannot see the radio chip. So now is the time to go to wherever you purchased it and say, hey, could you send me another one of those? because it's dead. You're either gonna have to buy one or hope they send one to you. I'm sorry the news is not better, but at least now you can give it a good burial, go put it in a cardboard box in your backyard and pour some water over it, maybe grow a plant in its honor. It's, it's gonna be fine. You're just probably not flying today. So yeah, these two were pretty straightforward, but 
let's, let's hop into the last one that can be a little bit more complex, even more so than the ones we've already talked about. And this last one's going to be a solid light. And a solid light is not a bad thing. It means you have a good bind between your radio and your receiver. It is actually a really good thing. But if at this point you're not seeing any stick movement in beta flight, it means that there's a problem between beta flight and your receiver. So now we have to troubleshoot some other things. And the first thing to troubleshoot there, if you're not using an SPI based receiver, if you're using UART, is to make sure in the ports tab of beta flight, you have serial RX selected for the correct UART. So go take a look at where you have your UART based ELRS receiver soldered onto the board, where the manufacturer put it, any of those things, and then go take a look in beta flight and make sure in the ports tab that you have serial RX selected. So if I had mine on four, I would select serial RX for UART four, save it and reboot it. And that's basically it. Now there's some complications there because some manufacturers break the same UR down into two places. They'll put SBUS in one place, maybe in the DJI plug, and then they'll put that same UART somewhere else on the board and then tell you that's where they prefer you solder your RX. That can be a problem. It totally can. If your DJI Vista air unit, whatever the heck it is tomorrow, if it's on there along with your ELRS receiver, it could be a problem and they could be cross-talking. So you wanna check your diagrams, the vendor diagrams for where SBUS is, what UART it is, and make sure your ELRS receiver is not sharing a pad or a trace with anything else. Make sure it doesn't break out into a plug that is also plugged into something because I have seen that happen so many times recently and it can be really confusing. If in doubt, put it on a different UART. And to that note, number two that it could be here, you could have the TX and the RX inverted on the UART. So double check that you have the receiver's TX going to a flight controller RX and the receiver's RX going to a flight controller TX. And if you just so happen to be soldering it to a new UART to maybe get over the fact that it's sharing with two things, perfect, perfect timing. Just make sure that is also correct. And the last thing it could be is in the receiver tab. When you go here, you want to make sure you've selected for serial UART if you're using a UART based and you've selected CRSF here. If you're using an SPI based receiver, however, you'll want SPI and you want to make sure that it says Expressa LRSA right here. Express LRS. Save that and reboot it. And now you should see stick movement. That stick movement may not be accurate. There are some other things. If your stick movement is all whacked out, you wanna look at things like channel maps, which I'm not gonna cover in this video because it's already super duper long. And you may not have switches, which again, not gonna cover in this video because it's super duper long. But there will be other videos on those things. I'm hoping after all of this troubleshooting, you've got your sticks in beta flight and things are golden and now you can go fly. I really, really hope so. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Express LRS actually is really, really good. When it works, it works so well. When a binding phrase binds right up for you and you don't have to do anything else, it is a wonderful system. But when it needs troubleshooting, it can be really frustrating. And the first place to start is with these light codes. And if you run through all the troubleshooting steps that I've given you, you should come out the other end with movements in your sticks. And if you don't, uh, yeah, there's still a bunch of other stuff that can happen that I couldn't cover in this video. So head over to my Discord and shoot a question to the great pilots that are in there that are super helpful, and we will all try to help you through it. I promise we can get you somewhere. And if we can't, the Express LRS Discord sure can. It is a great place to be. Go over there and ask your question as well, because there are some amazing people willing to help everyone out over there. And I just want to take this time to thank my patrons for allowing me to make these long, stupid videos that everyone hates to watch because they're ridiculously long, but I can do it because I don't need sponsorships from vendors to operate the channel. Thanks patrons for your hard earned money that you somewhat stupidly give me to do these things because I do stupid things like this with it. Any, anyway, if you feel like supporting the channel, I have my Patreon link below. If you don't wanna be a monthly subscriber, I do have the buy me a coffee link below as well. And I have a couple shirts if you're feeling the merchant. If you're feeling the merch, I have the shirts. Anyway, leave me a comment below about all the problems you've had with Express LRS and the worst one you've ever experienced. Also leave me a comment below if you were able to get yours fixed with this, because I would love to know how many people it actually helped. I hope there are a few of you out there. Anyway, until next time, stay greasy. Hopefully your Express LRS binds right up. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. I know they say size doesn't matter, but 
just just look at this. This is my original ExpressLRS module. It's a JR Bay, the biggest one you can get at the time. Pretty small, right? Then we moved up to this one. Moderate girth improvement, the small, small amount. But check out this freaking thing. It is massive. It is massive. And guess which one I like the most? This one. So tell me again, how size does it matter? I'm gonna go lie to myself and cry in a closet.